See the summit guys, I can see the summit. Last push, last push, okay. Come on. So if you want to know more information about the bags themselves, then click here. And if you want to go into more detail about the actual products I'm bringing, you can check out my gear list here. I use my rear saddle bag mainly for clothes. Obviously I've got to take warm clothes with me because of the altitudes and the climbing that I'll be doing. In addition, I take a tent, also my first aid kit, camping mug and flip flops. And I also have space then for some food to fit in if required. My full frame bag is for all my heavy stuff. So I put my cooking gear down at the bottom along with my power bank and all my electronics, batteries, etc. Then I put my drone and the controller in the larger top pocket where it's nice and safe. And then on the other side, I put all my toilet products in that compartment. So at the front, it's very straightforward. It's a sleeping bag, roll mat and camping pillow and then the tent poles I put on the outside of the handlebar bag, which I'll demonstrate later on. This pocket bag I only use because I have a YouTube channel, so it's basically my production during the day, everything that I need to be able to grab easily, my point and shoot camera, tripod, I've got a GoPro mount, I've got spare batteries for all my cameras. It's just easy accessible to take out of there and to film while I'm cycling. In addition to that, I've got a head torch that I use when I'm going through dark tunnels. So this is everything I carry between the handlebars. So my top tube is for bike repair and maintenance only. I bring with me an inner tube, a multi-tool kit, cable ties, chain lube, puncture repair kit, tire lever and chain link. My food pouch is obviously for snacks. This is one day's worth. If I'm cycling for about eight hours, I can fit up to two days worth of snacks in this pouch. And also I've got the meshing around the side to add a few extra if required. So obviously a big question is where are you storing your water? And I'm using a Camelback. This is a 12 liter rucksack with a three liter bladder. I'm going to be in the mountains, so there's going to be access to fresh water everywhere. So I won't be needing three liters at any point, probably two, two and a half at max. But I've also got space to put some food in here, especially when I go to the supermarket. It's great to be able to put food in here and then just cycle away. I find a Camelback really, really useful these days, but I don't think it's for everybody. It's something you've got to feel comfortable with while cycling. So this is what I wear when I'm on the bike. I've got my mountain bike style shoes. I've got a cap. I've got a base layer vest. I've got a cycling jersey, a pair of socks, cycling shorts, a pair of cycling gloves, shades, a phone which goes in my jersey pocket. And I've also got a helmet with rear and front lights attached to it for when I'm going through the tunnel and a GoPro on top. 
So I get a lot of questions about how I attach my top tube with a Canyon Grail because you don't have the traditional stem. So as you can see, I'm using a extra strap which goes a lot over the handlebars there. It keeps it pretty secure. And then there's another strap at the bottom here. The pocket bag clips at the top into place onto the handlebar bag. And then there's one clip at the bottom here. It's an integrated system from Apadura. So this is my ingenious system at the front. I have a WOHO harness and then that allows me to attach all three of these items together and securely. So the first thing I do is I take one of the straps from the harness and I thread it under the pocket bag and over the handlebar bag and then that just clips into place at the front. Then I take my tent poles and I just thread them through the strap from the harness. Now it does take a little bit of time, it's a little bit fiddly just got to make sure that I push it through correctly and make sure that it's in line and that it's level and then that's nice and secure and then I take the other strap and once again that goes under the pocket bag and over the handlebar bag and then that clips into place nice and simple as you can see this takes a matter of seconds to do and I'm ready to go all secure it's not going to move while I'm cycling, it's not going to fall down at any point and it's so so stable, I mean I can slam on this and it will not move and in addition I've got plenty of space to change my gears which is so important and to brake properly and I've got three places to be able to put my hands while cycling so lots of space for my hands, perfect. so so important when cycling for many many reasons on the rear we've got a 17 litre saddlebag and we've got 3.5 kilos in here 3.5 in the center just six liters but we've got 2.8 kilos in the center lots and lots of heavy stuff on the top here, handlebar bag and the pocket bag and the tent poles, we've got a total of 2.7 kilos. Top tube bag is 480 grams and the food pouch, we've got 160 grams roughly. 160 to 200 grams with a bit of food, with a bit of food in it, so next to nothing there. So what's really important here is that you've got a really good balance between what's on the rear here, three and a half, and the front 2.7. There's not a massive difference. So having that good balance between the two is absolutely essential. If you've got too much weight at the back here, especially when it's so high up, when you're climbing that weight, it's gonna be pulling you back. And when you are descending, it's gonna feel very unstable when you've got a lot of weight here, wagging away, wagging away at the top here. You don't want heavy weight at the top. Closer to center gravity is where it should be. Same again at the front. If there's too much weight on here, then you're constantly compensating when you're steering. You're having to try and force the wheel to go to one side as it might be trying to be pulled to the other. And when you're descending, that can be extremely dangerous and quite scary. And I have been in situations like when that has occurred, it feels like someone's just pulling your wheel to one side while you're traveling at 60, 70 kilometers an hour. That is not a good situation to be in, trust me. And then the middle here. I mean, having so much, just six liters and having 2.8 kilos, a lot of that is at the bottom. Lots of heavy stuff here at the bottom, at cent close to center of gravity. So it's just a fantastic weight distribution. If I need to pick up the bike, it's just so easy. I mean, it's literally incredible. So the total weight for the bike, the bags, and my camelback is 22.35 kilos. That would be the max weight I'll be taking with food and water on board. So what's your thoughts on the weight of the bike? and what I've brought with me, let me know in the comment box. Would you go lighter? Would you go heavier for this sort of ride? You wanna know more about the bike setup then I have done a video on my Canyon Grail which you can watch here, okay, I think. And briefly, this is Canyon Grail CF SL 8.0. So it's a full carbon frame, it weighs around nine 
kilos. It's a 2018 model. Um, some key features to mention, so we've got a double ring here at the front. This is a 5034, and then we on the cassette on the back is 1134. So with a lot of climbing, this is a nice setup. Um, got plenty of gears for them epic climbs I'm going to do. Let me know your opinions. Do would you have changed this? Would you have a different cassette on here? Would you have maybe an 1136 and a single ring? What would you do for these climbings? I'm interested to know for sure. Uh, other things to mention, which is really important, tires. Okay, what sort of tires you know for? So we've got 70% on on paved roads. We've got around 30% on gravel. Some of them are going to be really tricky with a lot of sharp stones and such. So. I've gone for the classics, I absolutely love these. These are the Shiwobi G1 All-Rounder. Now they've been around since about 2012 and they are just legendary in so many ways. They've never let me down, I've used them many times before. So this is a 40 mil, I kind of, that is my go-to when it comes to tire size for bike packing, 40 mil because I can go reasonably fast on the flats, on the paved roads, but at the same time, you've got that security, you've got that comfort, got that stability on the off-road tracks on them gravel tracks and such so really really love love these and of course you've got the tan walls as well just makes them look really cool you've got to have the tan walls seat so i have got a brooks b17 which is a lot more comfortable than this one this is the physique alicante i think it is um, but the reason I'm going for this one, it's around 350 grams lighter than the B17. The B17 is steel and it's heavy. This is carbon and a lot lighter. And it's once again, it's that balancing between comfort and weight when you go bikepacking and deciding what is best. And on this occasion, I have to think about the weight. But what would you go for? Let me know in the comment section. To give you a heads up guys on what is coming up on the channel, the rides I'm about to do now uh, all over the mountain roads of Norway which are only really accessible in the summer months, I'm documenting it all and then we're going to have this incredible series probably starting around September time um, leading up all the way through to Christmas, one episode a week of all the most amazing mountain roads in Norway. So you can follow me on my journey and also for the people who would like to do this themselves there's going to be lots and lots of information for you. In addition to that guys I've got some fantastic videos coming up with Faro. it's a bike company that I'm collaborating with here in Norway. So, so many great videos coming on the channel but the only way for this channel to survive and the only way for this channel to grow is for people to like, subscribe and comment. It's that simple really. Everybody does that, you're supporting the channel and all I want to do in return is provide you with amazing content and hopefully some great information. So for the guys that want to go or come to Norway and experience some of these amazing roads, you'll get that opportunity. All right, thanks for watching guys. Harder bra. So this is the money shot guys. This is the money shot. I don't know how well the GoPro picks it up with a wide lens, but oh my, it's incredible. What a view.